Hey guys, it's been a while, but today's an awesome day to be out fishing. I'm set up on the beach here. I have a new disappearing tackle box trick that I really want to show you, so watch this. There was a swell that recently churned up the water, and as you can see, it was super low visibility, closer to the shore. But as we swam out, the water thankfully cleared up a lot. I brought both my spear gun and my pole spear with me today, and it has the three-pronged paralyzer tip on it right now. And I was sure glad that I did. Take a look at the school of Manini, or convict tang, that I came upon almost immediately. A no man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Turns out I'm really rusty at using my three-pronged pole spear. And again, oh man, another miss. But to be honest, even when my pole spear skills are dialed in, I'm no expert at using it, but I can usually get a few good fish. So I decided to stick with the three-prong today and target some delicious Koli Tang and Manini. I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day Cause I found my way, I found my way In bad times, I know I'll be okay as I got out a little deeper, I started hitting my mark on some Kole Tang. They're also known as gold ring surgeon fish, and there's no size or harvesting limit. They grow up to six or seven inches, so they're not a super big fish, and it actually takes them about four years to get just over five inches big. Here's what a lot of people don't know. Juvenile Kole Tang start out looking a lot like a yellow tang, and yellow tang are not something that we're typically looking for when spearfishing, and they later turn into the tasty looking Kole Tang that most divers are familiar with and love. I personally like to gut my fish while I'm in the water, and I always find it fascinating when a massive school of black trigger fish shows up out of nowhere and just devours whatever I discard. Koli tangs are herbivores, which I find kind of surprising because they taste so good. Often my favorite fish are carnivorous and are devouring other fish and shellfish, which ends up making their meat delicious. These fish are native to Hawaii's reefs, and in the past, they were considered food for the royalty of Hawaii.
I had a great grouping of Kole Tang, so I switched spots and I decided to target another small fish that tastes awesome called the Manini. I primarily call these fish Manini, but another name for them is a convict tang. Because of their black and white stripes, they sort of look like a convict striped clothing in jail. Manini are the most abundant type of surgeon fish in my area, and that being said, you often need more than one to make a meal. They're sometimes in a small group, but often they form larger schools between, I don't know, maybe a hundred or more fish. I'm so rusty, what's up with all these tail shots, hey? Here's where things get interesting, guys. I always keep my eyes open for used cowrie shells and other neat things. And right here, I find something that I've never, ever found before, a super odd shaped and grooved all white cowrie type shell. I had no idea actually what it even was when I was in the water, but I knew from the 100 plus cowrie shells that I've found over the last few years that there has never been one that looks quite like this. I was gonna have to do some further investigation into what this shell even is. It wasn't until I was even out of the water and powered up my phone to search out what this amazing shell even was. And then I discovered what I had. It's a false nuclear cowrie. And these are considered very rare. This is like a gemstone of the shell world. And I have one. What a cool find. With such a rare shell, I had to put it on display instead of letting it collect dust inside of a drawer or on a shelf. And I don't know anything about creating jewelry, but my friend Lori does. So I asked Lori if she could turn this rare nuclear cowrie shell into something special for my grandma. Lori's jewelry business is called The Clay Bouquet, and it has recently taken off. Lori crafts some of the most amazing jewelry out of clay and other materials. She is super thoughtful in all her designs and is always innovating to bring new materials and ideas to her business. Plus, she recently launched a website and is now shipping her awesome jewelry all over the country. So check it out. Lori took the shell back to her studio and I was blown away at what she created. It was like she read my mind in terms of creating something that was super elegant but still featured the rare cowrie shell front and center. She produced a one of a kind custom gold necklace that I think my grandma is going to love. Tell me what you guys think of it down in the comments below. I don't know if you guys can sort of see that. It's like a jetty almost jetting out there into the water. It's called the historic Olawalu landing site. It's a historic place here on Maui. All right, so let's get cooking. Here's my spot over here. I plan on frying the fish in some oil using like a vegetable oil today. Let's lay this plane right here to get it going. Yeah. Oh, oh man, I think I might overfill my pan, shoot. All right, I guess we'll see if it works. Please don't spill, please don't spill. I'm just gonna dip the tail in to see if the oil's hot enough and see if like bubbles start forming. Yeah, it seems good to go. All right, next up, Kole Tang. We're looking for a really hard, crispy surface on the outside of these fish while, you know, really trying to keep the flesh under the skin here sort of nice and soft. Ideally, I wanna be able to like eat the fins like a potato chip off of here, really crispy, crunchy.
these fish are looking really great. I think they're done. Let's pull them out. I've got a rock over here as my plate. Lastly, I want to do one more of our kole tang with some panko on it. I totally forgot to bring an egg with me today, which really makes breadcrumbs sort of stick to the fish. But let's see if this works. I'm basically just patting the panko onto the fish, hoping it's going to stick to the oil coating. Okay, I don't think this is working at all. Do you guys see how the panko's just floating away right now from the fish? It didn't really stick. Oh well. Alright, first up, Manini. Let's try this out. Let's try the flesh. Mm. Oh yeah. This is delicious. Alright, next up, Kole. Let's do the Kole Tang. Oh man, this is really good. Let's try the flesh. Mmm. Oh, that's super good. I think the Kole is slightly better than the Manini. Alright, last up, the fried Kole. I only have a few small bites here, as you can see, that sort of got the panko on them. Mmm. Wow. Oh, dude, I almost forgot about my sauce. All right, let's try these fish with a Chick-fil-A Polynesian sauce. It's sort of like a sweet and sour sauce, in my opinion. I meant to put this on at the beginning. That looks so good there, look at that. All right, I wanna say, if you haven't had Kole Tang or Manini, do your best to get out there and spear some yourself or find a local seafood shop in Hawaii uh, who might carry them. It'd have to be a really local seafood shop though. These aren't fish that you would typically find at like, you know, Safeway whatsoever. All right guys, going in. Today's winner is the Kole Tang with that Polynesian sauce. Man, that Polynesian sauce makes everything taste good, as you guys probably know. Uh, the Manini is such a good tasting fish though too, and so that's a close second. I might throw a few extra magic tricks here at the end of this video, so if you want to watch those, stick around. And otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Finding these fish themed playing cards brings me back to when I was a kid and I loved learning magic tricks. And these cards are really cool, colorful, have a great variety of fish on them. Everything from bass to pike and char and graylings and trout and lots of different types of trout. These are really cool. 
All right, so how this trick works is I've got two cards here out of the middle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide these two cards somewhere in the deck. The cards I have are a nine and a six, a six and a nine, a diamond and a heart. I'm really gonna hide them in there good. And on the count of three, I'm gonna see if I can pull them out of the middle of the deck. One, two, three. Yeah, got him.